is the Holy Valley, green and radiant heart where the love of St. Francis of Assisi still shines. We are in the province of Rieti, in a valley which is adjusting mountains and crystalline waters. Here, forming a cross into natural amphitheater, four Franciscan centuries exist. Paojo e Bussone, Fonte Colombo, La Foresta and Greccio. It is possible to observe, here more than in every other place, the wonderful union between architecture and nature, which represents the base of the main stage of Francis Beth. Here lies the magic of a choice. Here peace and prayers. Here art and colors. Francis Beth starts in a city where the landmark of his evangelic experience lies, the Porciuncola, in a region of small chapel surrounded by oaks. After having received here the first fellows, Francis had a dream in which God told him to live following the gospel, as he then reported in his testament. Francis' contribution consolidated, at the threshold of the 13th century, the values of modern man. Art, politics, religion, and love for the nature. One of the main aspects of Franciscan preaching is notable in the restoration of small churches and chapels, maybe ruined or already destroyed. He went to Assisi, where he brought San Damiano and the Pascuncola to a new life, and then he moved to the valley of Rieti. The small churches grew bigger until they became real monasteries. Francis managed to build religious buildings in lonely places, pilgrimage destinations, that are well represented by an admirable temple, Gratio. Along the valley of Rieti, some of the most valuable art innovations of the second part of the Italian 13th century were realized. The spirit of St. Francis creates a symbiotic relationship with the nature. So does the nature with architecture, and the architecture with the pictorial works. On his way to Rome, after having abandoned all that he had, Francis found the lonely and luxurious nature of Poggio Bistone, La Foresta, Fonte Colombo, and Greccio. He saw he his dream coming true. His first fellows he came around him and then started to preach the gospel among the nearby villages. Francis considered the woods as a natural cathedral in which he could isolate in prayers. The trees, the rocks, the caves, they were his home. Incredible witnesses remain along the whole of Italian territory, but the original cradle of the Franciscan activity is in the Holy Valley, where even the rocks take the color of the surrounding nature. Good day, good folks. With these words, Francis greeted the people in Poggio Bustone, where he arrived in 1209, and where he prayed in a lonely cave in the woods. He decided he to start telling to other people about his choice of faith. The projects of Franciscan evangelization go today to the Holy Land, to Kazakhstan, to Morocco, Russia, 
Thailand, China and Africa, but even in California, to the Mason, Haiti and many other places in the world. Premissa sunt Divi peccata, sicut postulasti. Here your sins are forgiven, as you ask for. This sentence refers to the arrival of Saint Francis and his first brethren. They were worried about what their future was going to take. Could this poor man? With our religious knowledge, live the whole life of following the gospel and preaching it around the world. A vision eased him, so they were able to go ahead. The convent building of Poggio Bustone includes a particularly valuable cloister. And as Father José Rodríguez Caballo, General Minister of the Order of Friars Minor, said, the Holy Valley of Rieti is the cloister of the Franciscans. Then there is Fonte Colombo. A dream comes true here. Francis edits the first rule of the Friars Minor that was officially approved by Pope Honoris III in 1023. And he, in Fonte Colombo, Francis stopped during the last period of his life, with a serious eye disease which required a surgery. Unfortunately, it did not help him to heal. My brother Fire, noble and useful between the creature of Almighty, be amiable with me during this time. I pray your Creator to temper your ardor so I shall bear it. So Francis spoke to his brother, the fire, with love. He could bear the other, so his brothers and the doctor remained astonished. His strong faith operated again for a miracle. A suggestive work leads to the small and lonely chapel of Magdalena, which is situated next to the place where St. Francis was operated to the eyes. The walls have a wonderful memory of them, a capital letter tower, painted by Francis himself. He often used to sign the walls with the last letter of Hebrew alphabet, knowing about the deep meaning it has, realization of God's word, cross of the Christ, symbol of faith, and Franciscan habit. This is St. Mary of La Foresta. The buildings still preserve the deep suggestion that comes from the time they were at the stage of a moving miracle by St. Francis. Many churchgoers came to visit him when he was here in 1225, but the crowd ruined the vineyard of the church, only livelihood of the priests. Then Francis promised that the harvest of the following year would take an extraordinary quantity of grapes, so from a few of them, a huge amount of wine came. The presence of St. Francis is highlighted by the Church of Mary of La Foresta that incorporated the elder church of St. Fabiano, ascribable to the 11th century and containing an interesting cycle of frescoes. The author is a Roman artist influenced by Giotto's work. During 14th century, 
the building was radically modified, and by the following century, the convent and cloister were erected. But the center of the Franciscan activity in the Holy Valley was Greccio, where the saint was protagonist of an event which changed history. In 1223, during Christmas night, a few days later the official approval of the rule, just here, Francis created the Nativity scene. I would like to depict the baby Jesus in Bethlehem and somehow actually see him when he had so many problems for the lack of all those things a baby needs. He was laying in a crib between an ox and a donkey. He calls many friars for the event. Men and women are coming to celebrate with candles and torches to illuminate their night, in which a star that enlightened it every day and time was shining. At last Francis arrives. He sees that everything is on its place, as he said, and he feels full of joy. So he puts the crib on the center, with the hay in it, and then he lets the ox and donkey in. Greccio becomes now the new Bethlehem. A fresco on the lunette of the cave highlights this comparison. The Gospel of Luke was probably the one proclaimed the Christmas night of 1223. The presentation of the nativity scene, so simple, whereas it was purely original, has to be considered as an initiative of an extraordinary man who desired to show God in the flesh. Francis loved Greccio because it reminded him to Bethlehem, so he saw it as the perfect place to create the magnificent representation. The event of Greccio instantly earned a great notoriety in the whole surrounding area, until it was considered one of the most important points on the main pictorial cycles over the life of the saint, during Middle Age and Renaissance. Only the Gospels of Luke and Matthew speak about the nativity of Jesus, one emphasizing the Holy Virgin and the other calling attention of Saint Joseph. It is the tale of a timeless night that saw a baby, who changed the course of history, being born. A crib, the place of the food, embraces the infant. Bethlehem, in Hebrew, means house of bread. Reggio is nowadays twin to Bethlehem. This moment of devotion left a sign that is still visible today. We can almost divide history in before Francis and after Francis, and Greccio represents the divider. His apostolate created a revolution over the faith, the painting, the architecture, the conception of space, and consideration of landscape. Francis wanted the churchgoers to feel reunited. Therefore, he got off the naves and the church became a unique hall. That was one of the most notable innovations of medieval architecture. The walls of Franciscan churches are earth and spirit, strongly simplified structures, stages of dramatic actions. Great innovations also existed in painting, where the figures become actors in a three-dimensional space. And then the sculpture which becomes the way to show the world in an amazing, various manner. For instance, the beautiful sculptures of Arnolfo di Cambio, 
they reach to transmit the feelings of the depicted characters themselves, as the deep devotion of the three kings and the lovely participation of Saint Joseph in the nativity scene of Saint Mary Major in Rome. It is one of the first nativity scene representations of history, created under the power of the first Franciscan Pope of the throne, Nicholas I, by the work of Renolfo, the artist who knew how to render the innovative message of Francis. But one of the most revolutionary Franciscan innovations was the consideration of the landscape. Francis had with nature an unbelievably modern and lovely approach. The Holy Valley of Rieri preserves the memory of his extraordinary ability to love the world in every feature of it, and to build real cathedrals of faith in lonely and hardly accessible places. Many miracles took place in the wild nature, inside the deep green of woods. The wood near River Dutri is famous for the presence of a secular and not deep beach whose branches gave shelter to Francis during a storm and lightning, whose branches gave shelter to Francis during a storm and lightning, while he was retiring in prayers. The tree is different from the other members of its kind. Its structure is composed by a particularly tangled top, with sinuous knotted branches. The legend tells that the tree transformed for celestial will. There was just to create a repair for Francis when he was in need. The traces of Francis' steps still remain along the squares and corners of the enchanted villages in the province of Rieti, a real stone scenography. From the lonely roads of Labro, all around the main tower, to the splendid burg of Contigliano. From the peculiar trapezoid belfry of the church of Saint Elijah Prophet, within a stone's throw from Fonte Colombo, to the main square of Cantalice which is like a majestic and lonely sentinel over the valley below. The wild nature wraps the tops of Terminillo, where at 1,623 meters of height, a votive temple with an essential shape celebrates the great soul of St. Francis, declared patron of Italy in 1939, and still preserves his relic. As the Pope Pius XII said, the most Italian between saints, the most saint between Italian. Even in Rieti, the presence of Francis left its own Nico. A wonderful memory in the cycle of fresco of the church entitled to him remain. They are exposed today in the diocesan museum of the town, in the papal palace. The episode of the creep of Greccio is a part of them. Marvelous stone capitals, one different from the other, crown fine columns in the dark vaults of the outstanding crypt of the cathedral, and below the groin vaults of the altar hall.
The Lodge of the Papal Palace is a notable architectonic pendant, which shows, in a monumental way, the medieval scheme of the crypt. The bare rock and the vaults form an essential complex also in here. It is maybe one of the most valuable manifestations of the civil construction during the 13th century in Italy. We are now in Rome. Francis, lovely but determined, came here in 1210 with the first brothers. He asked for, and obtained then, the approval of the rule by the Pope Innocent III. The memory of the step of Francis perpetuates nowadays in the church of St. Mary in Araceli, once the house general of the order, and in the church of St. Francis at Ripa, built replacing an old liposarium where the saint found recover for the night during one of his journeys in the Channel City. The love of Francis still deeply comes to us every time we go to the Holy Valley of Rieti, every year during the representation of the nativity scene of Grecia. Francis is an absolute main character of the stage of the most important pictorial cycles of Italian art. He's a recall for people, he's a reason to pray, he's the courage to preach the gospel around the world. Francis opened the doors of a modernity in Italy. The small man of Assisi is then become inspirational, precursor and prophet of the modern world.